Yo, what is up, guys? We are back. Um, we've got a cool video from, I believe this is the United, yeah, United 24. They've got some great content. FPV mission on Pokrov's front embedded with a drone unit hunting Russians. Uh, we always like good Russian, or uh, we always like good um, drone footage here. So uh, real quick, my name is Saxon. I go by Vegas uh, here in Ukraine. I joined the International Legion for the defense of Ukraine in January of 2023. I'm no longer in the Legion. I'm with a different team. Um, with that said, I am heading back to the front in a couple of days. I want to get some real life current perspective of the front line. I'll only be out there for a few days, hopefully, fingers crossed, and then come back. Uh, because I've been getting a ton of questions regarding what it's really like out here. And I have so many people in my inbox and in my email saying, hey, we're on our way out to Ukraine. We're coming. We're already here. What's it like out there? And I, I explain what it's like in so many videos, but the truth is the situation on the front is extremely dynamic. It's always changing, and I want to get you some uh, first-person perspective of how it is currently out there. So if you want to see anything specific out on the front, let me know in the comments. I'll try to get as much uh, content footage and uh, talk with some of the Ukrainian soldiers out there, get their perspective on it as well. Um, I got a bunch of different breed patches and a different breed flag made that I want to take out there and uh, give to these soldiers that are uh, holding the line out there where I'm headed. So um, that's that's pretty much all I wanted to say. If you are trying to get to Ukraine, shoot me an email. If you have any questions, shoot me an email. I will. I have a ton of emails, but I am getting back to them as many as I can every single day, um, and I will get back to you. I promise. Let's watch this video. It looks badass. <laughs> Because you're a priority target, sadly, because we're causing a lot of damage to the fuckers. So it's 2 a.m. We're in Pokrovsk, we're getting ready to meet soldiers from a drone unit of the 110th Battalion who uh, gave us a meeting uh, tonight. So it's very early, but we have to move fast because we're going to go to their positions. And basically, we have to move during the night, not to be spotted by, the, by Russians, because we're going to get as close as it gets. All right, let's roll. For safety reasons, the exact location will stay secret. We drive in the dark with dimmed headlights. It's way past curfew, and the only cars at this hour are military ones. After a few minutes, the lights of a massive military car blind us. We jump from our vehicle to meet Stadi, Google, and Samurai from the 110th Mechanized Brigade. There are the units, eyes in the sky. The greetings are brief, just a time to strap on some blue tape, take a quick drag on a cigarette, and we're on our way. The drone pilots have no time to waste. So right now we're heading to the car with the guys. Uh, we're gonna go you know, right where the Russians are, so we're gonna have to be fairly, fairly quick. It's 100% dangerous. There are FPVs on this road. And artillery as well. In short, getting there is the most dangerous part. That's the case in a lot of these positions because they've been holding, the Russians and the Ukrainians have been holding specific sections of the line for so long that they have dialed in what time rotations happen, when there's exfills, when there's infills, whether they have um, eyes on the enemy infilling or exfilling, they know the time. So they'll just send artillery, they'll send mortars, they'll send drones to this to this position because they know every fucking night or every 48 hours they're doing a rotation right here. So many people I know have been injured or killed just because of this. Not even in their position yet, but just getting there and the locations just zeroed in on. After a long hour, the car suddenly turns and enters some field. There's a fire ahead of us. This is where we're going. The familiar silhouette of trenches scars the surrounding fields. Fortifications are underway here. We're getting closer to the position. We're completely exposed and the Russians can easily spot us with thermal cameras here. Yeah, so we just arrived uh, in, uh, in the position. So they're slowly uh, getting ready. It was extremely quick, extremely efficient. Uh, we arrived in complete silence, a little bit of a tense atmosphere, of course, and with, you know, uh, uh, lights off, 
because, as I said before, Russians are not far. When we arrived, we saw a massive fire. Of course, we headed right uh, in this direction. Study is focused. He prepares the station with the impressive dexterity of someone who has done this a thousand times before. The hideout is clean and spartan. A few cans of energy drinks and some snacks. This is all they'll eat today. There won't be any trip out of the position to... Energy drinks, the lifeblood of the Ukrainian frontline soldier, I swear. I've seen people, I've seen Ukrainian soldiers load more energy drinks into their packs than ammunition. <laughs> Refill food reserves. We're stuck here until the next sunset. They're slowly preparing the, um, the material to work with the drones behind me. And this is where they're gonna start, well, building up and hopefully hitting some targets tonight. Meanwhile, outside, Samurai prepares the FPVs in the dark. He straps an explosive charge to each of them. Oh, oh, oh. Problem, the zip ties don't fit, and the mines are not tight enough on the drones, meaning they risk falling on us on the first flight. Not great. Every brigade has its own drone units to monitor the sky, and many of them are around. The fuckers are roughly 1.6 kilometers in that direction. Seven to eight to Ocheretine. But they're everywhere, trying to surround us. Samurai, a 33-year-old former cop from Chernihiv, prepares roughly 30 mines. Ukraine constantly pushes the boundaries of technology to try and beat Russia's heavy war machine. Yet Russia has the resources to scale up the technology it steals from Ukrainians. Russian drone operators also copy the circular trajectory of Ukrainian drones to get closer to the soldier's position. When you hear a drone, how do you know if it's ours or theirs? We know where our guards are located, but they're sly too. They can come in from the side and make a circle. They'll make a circle and come in from there, so we'll think it's ours. They're very clever. The duel starts at dawn. That's a, I say this in a lot of my videos, but there's this common misconception that the Russians are just all a bunch of uneducated, untrained barbarians. But th that could be the truth with a percentage of them. But there's a lot of good soldiers, a lot of smart, well-trained drone operators and vehicle operators, tank operators. I mean... They're trained. There's a lot of well-trained troops in this mil in their military. Russia's heavy artillery versus nimble Ukrainian drones. The sun rises on the flat steppe. In front of us, the Russians. This is the most difficult direction. Unfortunately, all the weight has shifted away from it. Everyone has moved to other areas like Kursk and other directions. Now there's not a lot of success, there's not a lot of people, and I don't know for how long we'll manage to hold positions in this direction. What do Russians have? What kind of, of equipment do they have? Uh, you know, they have a lot of, of resources, they have a lot of, of, of men. Unfortunately, the Russians have a lot of resources. Even if you take an infantryman, he's equipped with Kevlar. As for equipment, they have more ammunition for artillery and more vehicles. And they are pushing through 24-7. Russians are so confident that they sometimes try to attack positions with quads or even bikes. These days they're scouting for new directions to breach through the defense lines, Google says. Yes, there was a lot of Russian equipment when we just got here, way more. We destroyed it all. Study and Google are from Kherson Oblast. They saw Russia's occupation firsthand. This war has turned the brothers into brothers in arms. It's a family business, much to the discontent of their mother, Study admits. 
Складний момент був мамі сказати. The hardest part was telling my mom. That was the toughest thing. Достатньо довго час. Because for quite a while she didn't know where we were or what we were doing. We prepped her gradually. And that's when we told her. Працювати легше. It's easier to work together. You can always support each other. Підбодрити, підтримати. As my grandmother said, are you a convict or something? It's already 6 30 in the morning, it's now a plain day, and the guys are already working. Uh, it seems like they've already hit an artillery gun, but we're waiting for confirmation for that. Google pilots a drone with an antenna to give more leeway to the FPV handled by Stari. The protocol is always the same. A live stream shared by all drone units shows Russian positions. Once the target is locked, Samurai launches the drone with its lethal charge and everybody runs into the bunker in case the Russians try to hit the position. <coughs> Stari and Google then take over, bringing the explosive drone to its target. Sometimes they miss, and sometimes they hit. <laughs> The FPV unit just managed to hit a Russian Ural truck, so first they hit the cabin, another group hit the back, and then the ammo in the truck exploded. Nice. Artillery is relentlessly pounding all around us. FPV pilots are Russian troops' favorite targets, study says. They start with mortars, then they open fire with artillery cannon to make sure you don't come out of your dugout. Then they start up the guns, a couple of tanks appear somewhere in the woods and start firing directly. After that, they hit you with grad rockets, followed by an attack from a Su-25, throws a glide bomb on you. Because you're a priority target, sadly. Because we're causing a lot of damage to the fuckers. Paranoia reigns here. Every buzzing sound could mean death from above. And even mosquitoes make them paranoid, they admit. A Zala drone flies above us. The soldiers tell us it's okay because there's enough foliage to protect us from praying eyes. Plus, Russian Zala drones don't have live streaming, which leaves some time for Ukrainian soldiers to hide. Yet, winter will be tough when the positions are exposed and every tire track is visible in the snow. The nightfall provides cover for the boys. It's time to get ready to leave. Still, they're slightly disappointed with today's results. There wasn't a lot today. Today we managed to hit a 2S-19 and an MSTAS. Unfortunately, it didn't have much effect. We damaged an Ural with its convoy, and then our colleague destroyed it along with its ammunition. The sun is falling down and the uh, sounds of artillery are getting stronger and closer. It's about how time that we leave the position. Uh, now we're going to have to drive through the open field and the sun is not completely down yet and the Russians could still spot us. So we're going to have to, as I repeat, be very careful and drive extremely fast. A few minutes drive from us, a position is burning. It could have been us. After a few hours of rest, the boys will be back tomorrow to hold the line. Because here in Donbass, War never sleeps. So that was interesting. It wasn't like our uh, usual high octane, you know, rushing, pushing trenches and CQB work. But this part of the conflict is so crucial and I think so overlooked. And this is how they're this is how they're holding the lines largely. They go out. They do these rotations with drones. They keep the enemy infantry pushed back. They keep the enemy armor pushed back and vice versa. The Russians are doing the same to the Ukrainians. It's a, in, I, in my opinion, it's as much of a stalemate, if not a losing, a losing battle as it can be. But that was interesting. Um, United 24, I will link their channel in the description below. Definitely check them out. Uh, but let's leave it at that. Please like, share, subscribe. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next video.